was I kind of laying down on a pillow on my iPad watching? And by the end, was I sitting up completely like, what is going on? Hello, Hi. Rob. How you doing, man? You ready? I'm good. Yes. We are at CGC. I've never been. Have you been here before? I have been here before. Okay, this is this is my first time. I am having the best time. It's so much fun here. Yes. So many comics. You've been signing comics for a long, long time, right? Uh, y yes, most of my a career. Little, or a little while. We, yes. A little while. Now, but this is your first CGC signature series. First ever. In -house. Ne never, never participated. What took so long? Uh, good question. You know what? I just, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, requests from the customers and the fans. Mm -hmm. Clearly the CGC popularity has skyrocketed, I think in the last five years. And I just know from my live streams and being when I was doing conventions, people just want, they, they just want the CGCs. I, I have a live stream and, and my buddy Dave, Key Collectibles, he's on, the he's on the live stream with me. So he was a witness to this before I left, the, the night before I left, because the remarks and the sketches I did in front of Dave, he's a witness. And so we packed him up to bring them with us because I wanted to have them in good condition. And my wife said, aren't you bringing anything to CGC? And I said, no. And she says, what are you talking about? You've got to get books to CGC. And I was like, well, who am I talking? My wife doesn't even read comics, but she's telling me I got to get this stuff slabbed and graded. And Chris, I had to go out to the safes and get all these comics to bring them here so that I could get them slabbed. I mean, I can't go home without some slab books. So, so it has bit my wife. Okay, and, and, and Dave was there, he was my witness. He saw and I was like, wow, this is weird. The, so the fever is real. We are sitting in a room with like, uh, th there may be a quarter mil, $300,000 worth of New Mutants 98s in this room. Trust me, I signed them all day. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap. Now Happy. you got a rainbow of colors here. <laughs> What's your favorite marker design with? Okay, the white marker has really emerged. Okay. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you also, people have been directing me to do yellow and on the right surfaces, Yellow just pops. So many of them just come without instructions, so we just default to the black ink. But uh, people, they know what they want. Red, blue, gold, silver. Uh, it, you know, you gotta slow down and kind of take the, take the direction. But uh, white and yellow um, uh, are, are, are really, they, they really pop, especially on the right surface. Like, like Deadpool 1 uh, with the big Deadpool logo all on black. I mean, white, yellow, any color honestly pops on that. So it's, it's, it's fun. Now you've been doing like a marathon of signatures today. I have. Hand exercises you've been doing the last few <laughs> no, weeks to get yourself in shape for no, this. No, people ask me all the time. I don't know why I've never, you know, given that I have literally produced 5,000 pages of comic book art and signed thousands of comics, I've never had hand issues, Chris. Yeah, no, I, I always knuckle bump you because I'm afraid that you'll just squeeze my oh, you're, hand. You're so way too kind. I think that you just your grip is too Look strong. At Look at these new mutants. Look at these books. They're Look, beautiful. They, 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 they are sweet. Now we know that New Mutants '98 is your most popular yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. What, what are the other three Deadpool covers that you signed the most? Well, no, New New Mutants '87 is right there. It, it, Cable may have only appeared in one movie, Deadpool 2, but he is today. Number two, it's 98 and New Mutants 87, and those are the, the two books. I, I, don't, I don't see anything displacing them in my lifetime, to be honest, but you never know. Uh, I, I'm, still, I'm still relatively young. Rob Liefeld's here at CGC, signing thousands and thousands of books. Why was Rob Liefeld somebody that you guys wanted to have a part of the Signature Series? Well, you know, besides him just being an artist, uh, it's just his involvement in comic books in general. His, you know, uh, what he's contributed to the modern market over the past 30 years, uh, the characters he's created, uh, launching Image. You know, he's had a huge, profound effect on on the industry. And so, for that reason, we're really excited to have him here as part of our signature series program. Now we move on to lot number 69, our cover lot, which is controversial, infamous. <laughs> Rob Liefeld, creator of Deadpool, drew this incredible illustration of Captain America. Uh, it's original art, promotional illustration. We're going to open the bidding. 21,000. I have an unpopular opinion. Yes. The Captain America photo. Yeah. I love it. Okay. I think it's great. I And what I wanted to know is I feel like when you, the, you know, people always talk about the proportions of that photo, but when yeah, you yeah. look at it next to like Arnold Schwarzenegger right. back in his heyday, the proportions are not that off at all, I don't think. So my question is, do you, like, did you have a particular, like a, like a reference that you used back in the day for that? I just wanted to draw a big, bold Captain America. Here's the deal, that, they blew that up at the Heroes Reborn uh, conference in New York City at Marvel. Uh, at Marvel Comics, Jim Lee and myself flew out to New York. He had his Fantasy Four image, and that was the image, and it was like a, a banner behind this, and people in the audience were like, oh, oh, look at how great Captain America. 
you know, I didn't uh, hear anything about that image until the 2000s. Mm -hmm. It was like somebody decided, I'll meme it, I'll do it. And, and I, I don't mind it either. either. I don't really, uh, it doesn't shake, rattle, or roll me. And I'll tell you this, I did not do an homage to that cover for now 27 years and I just did one. So uh, I think it's gonna do really well. I think people, it, again, it sparks something in people. Yeah. While Rob Liefeld, he's best known as the creator of Deadpool, I recently got a chance right. to talk to him about the subject of his Captain America illustration, and it's probably the most memed comic image of all time. You know, Rob just yeah. recently did his very first homage to that image, you know, with Falcon. Now, I as see, a yeah. comic art expert, where do you think this Captain America image is gonna fall in the annals of comic history? Uh, I mean, in terms of uh, 90s comic art, I mean, it's got to be one of the most famous images. Probably one of the most famous images that Rob Liefeld ever, ever made, uh, which is, is kind of kind of cool in a way. It's uh, incredible. Like, it looks it looks great. It does. It looks it looks fantastic. I, I honestly. I, I wish I wish I had the money to take that home with me. That would I wish I could bid on it yeah i'm incredibly fond of this piece like i really am like this is we had this in uh, the new york comic-con at our booth and people kept coming by and stopping and, and taking pictures with it rob leefield stopped and took a picture with it which i thought was very cool is there a signature on where's his signature at on the uh, piece, signature right? is right down i don't know if you can see down there nice awesome why is the art going up for auction after all this time is it due to the resurgence of interest in the image due to rob's homage or was that just a lucky coincidence i think that that's kind of a, a nice coincidence yeah uh, you know we have a lot of people who have incredible collections and offer pieces from from their collections from time to time and so i think that that's kind of the situ situation here the uh owner said this is the right time to sell it and how how could they be wrong now heritage auctions has auctioned off other artwork from rob liefeld in the past where do you think this stands in comparison to his other artwork do you think this captain america image is more or less desirable than say the cover of new mutants 98 i think that this in terms of rob liefeld art that we've offered in the past it's hard to say that we have a comparable on it, right? Because this is its own thing. Okay. There are a lot of people who maybe are not so interested in a lot of his other work that are interested in this because of its place in the cultural zeitgeist. No, I, I mean, if you were to ask me, do you want the first uh, cover for, you know, the, with Deadpool on it, or would you want this Captain America piece of art? I I almost think I would rather pick Captain America if I, like, given the choice, just because there's, we were talking about this earlier, there's no other art like it where it's just, it, it, you know, it's become, it. I don't know, it's just, it's just so iconic. I mean, there's no art that's just been celebrated for, for what it is like that. Oh, truly. Uh, yeah, and... <laughs> And it's just, it's gone through so many incarnations and for years, for years, it's been passed around. Mm -hmm. Now, would you like to, I know you already said there's been a bid on it, but would you like to hazard a guess at what the art will go for at auction when all is said and done? Do you have a guess? So we're guessing it's going to be somewhere in the mid five figures. Oh, so interesting. So that's, you that's think kind it, of, it's a little bit vague, but because yeah. like it's it's hard to say. Uh, yeah, um, I understand. But, you know, if it's forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars, maybe more. One ten is bid asking one twenty. Heritage Live one ten is bid go one twenty. One hundred and twenty is the advance. Your cut bids one fifteen. Bid now Heritage Live at one hundred and twenty thousand. One hundred twenty thousand to you Heritage Live. All bids in, fair warning, are you sure <laughs> at 120,000? Last chance, 110,000 it is. 7356. 7356, congratulations. At CGC, we talked about your cult classic Captain America artwork. Right, which right. Just sold for like an astounding one hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars with Heritage Auctions. I just want to know what was your reaction like when you heard that news? I was pleasantly surprised. Is that 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 would be the truth? Pleasantly surprised. And then having talked to a lot of guys who were bidding on it afterwards, because that community's fairly small. You know, they just 
they didn't hold back on uh it, it's weird it's, it goes back 30 years on on uh how much they dig that Captain America stuff and that Heroes Reborn stuff. It, it kind of closed the circle because I because 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 people were like, man, that is my favorite Captain America. And I just had to have it. I had to have it. So that was exciting. But I answer your original question, man. I, I, I had low expectations. I, I, I there's there's very few things I I, I have a greater expectation for. I, I, I'm generally keep it here, you know? Do you kind of look at this as like a sweet revenge for all the people who gave you grief over that art? No, no, I, I don't. I am literally, as always, I just focus on the people who liked it. I would rather just, uh, um, it, it immediately, somebody wanted it, somebody real bad, you know? I mean, that the, the, and what I mean by that is a group of people you don't get to that without people going back and forth. I I read a couple of I'm, I'm in a couple of original art groups on uh, on social media on different platforms, and some of these guys were like, "Oh my gosh, did you see the slug fest? It was boom!" I mean, they're they're uh, watching it in real time. I mean, was I kind of laying down on a pillow on my iPad watching, and by the end, was I sitting up completely like, "What is going?" On? Like, uh, it it got my attention too. But no, I just think really. The 90s art is exploding. It's where the biggest growth is. I am an avid art collector myself. And when you talk to uh, art collectors, that's where the biggest growth is right now. Because because Chris, these guys who were 12 and 15 are doctors, they're lawyers, they're successful guys on Wall Street. Um, they're, 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 they're managers of multiple firms. I mean, so they've grown up. This is the stuff they loved. And so they they want to have it. Do you have any idea of who might have won the auction, whether it was a fan or a dealer or maybe like a well-known Canadian actor who's got a lot of money? Ah, no, that's funny. <laughs> that, no. Hey, you know what? I was kind enough. Uh, the, the, the buyer did reach out to me uh, that afternoon and was excited and wanted to share with me, I would never reveal there. Uh, but it was a, I will tell you this, it's a new, it was a new player in the field. It was not one of the uh, existing uh, buyers that I'm aware of. You've done one homage now uh, to this, for this promo art, you know, you did the cover for New York Comic Con. Do you foresee yourself doing any more homages for this art or are you going to put that homage up for sale? The homage sold the day it was announced. Uh, my art dealer, that's gone. I will be, I, I, I have informed Marvel. See, what I'm trying to do, because there is so much, there's so much misconception. People thought that that was a cover. People, and again, just this, this is what we're talking about right here. Got the catalog right here. Um, people thought this was a cover. It was never a promotional piece and it never appeared in a Marvel comic. It never appeared in a Marvel comic. And I I said to Marvel after the auction, maybe it's time to make that a cover. And I'm waiting on their decision. In the meantime, I was offered to do a series of these featuring other Marvel characters and I have declined. Uh, I, I really waited for about a week and I talked to a lot of people and my wife was the one that said, you can't do that. You can't do that. You don't, you dare let that stand. The other cap was an, I mean, it took me 30 years to replicate it. Right. So I'm not going to do any more with it, but I, I, it's fun when I see other, um, homages because, because I've, I've, <laughs> I think there was three new ones that were made that day. Cause you know how some of these independent creators, man, they're like, that's the image. Boom. And by three o'clock that afternoon, they had a colored cover going coming soon. I'm like, wow, that was fast. Now, what are some of Rob's comics that are the most common that you see coming through CGC on a regular basis? Well, the number one's got to be New Mutants 98, of yeah, course, we all the, first, know that. Yeah. the first Deadpool. Um, but uh, 87 uh, and 100 from the same run, we get those in a lot, X Factor 2. Uh, and then, of course, issues from his Youngblood series and, uh, and The Heroes Reborn is uh, more recent work. Now, where do you think New Mutants 98 falls in the importance of overall comic book history? 
I feel like it's up there with Spidey 300 as one of the all-time greatest modern comics. Uh, with both of those issues we've graded, gosh, thousands and thousands of copies. You know, Deadpool is, is one of the great characters in the, uh, in, in, in the Marvel Universe. So I put it right up there with Spidey 300, just like Hulk 181 would be for the Bronze Age and AF-15 for the Silver Age. New Mutants 98 is certainly a, a cornerstone. Now is New Mutants 98 something where you see the value rise and fall based only around the quality of the movies at any given time? Uh, I, I think it's transcended that to some degree. Um, the, certainly a lot of books will rise and fall based on you know, when a movie's released, how well it does, follow-up uh, sequels. But Deadpool as a character seems to have uh, become so popular in the in public consciousness that I think its popularity is, is transcended just the movies. It, it's it's going to be something that we're going to see over and over again in the future because it's such a strong, popular character. So I, I don't see I see the value holding and in fact probably going up in the future because there's so many fans that want to own a copy. I've always wanted to ask the first time you saw Deadpool in live action yes. in Wolverine Origins, what was your immediate <laughs> reaction? Obviously. Uh, knowing what uh, a disaster the end of the movie was ahead of time, because I had gone to Fox, I had gone to Fox. People, I was thinking of all of you. I went to Fox and the executive, I sat across from his desk and I said, you guys cannot be serious about the way you're depicting him. And I, I said, guys, come on, I'm, 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 I'm at 20th Century Fox. You got a big giant studio here, you got a props department, go and just make a mask and give us an after credit scene, like first a katana will come out of the shadows and then a cool mask and just say, coming soon. Like, like, cause here's the deal. Obviously Ryan Reynolds was, was a star on the rise. And right after Wolverine Origins, that summer of 2009, he had the proposal come out with Sandra Bullock. So it was like one, two punch. I knew ahead of time that they weren't listening. They would literally sit back and tell me, I, I kid you not, him and, and the president of the studio would say, Leifeld, Deadpool is not really the focus of this movie. This movie is about launching Gambit. And I'm like, well, that's another thing, but that's not my, like, I'm not gonna die on that hill. I gotta take care of the Deadpool hill right here, okay? Because I mean, they missed kind of wildly on both, mm -hmm. right? But then I went and I took my family to see uh, opening night, uh, well, when it, when it was local, at the local theater, I, I, I took them all to see Wolverine Origins because we love the X-Men movies, period, and, and Hugh Jackman. And, but that first 10 minutes with Ryan as Wade and cutting the bullet and in the elevator popping off, you're like, this is working. This is great. Uh, off the rails at the end with the, you sewed his mouth shut. Like they, they could not have get, to this day though, I can go back to when the blade comes out of his arm and you're like, that looks like a, a four foot blade just came out of a two foot forearm. If it goes back in, doesn't yeah, his he elbows, elbows lock? Yeah. What, why isn't he walking around like this, right? So, hey, couldn't have been happier when in the end of Deadpool 2, Ryan went back in time, <laughs> or Deadpool, and, and shoots the Wolverine Origins version, right? I mean, kind of, and, and honestly, it feels like it, it's, it really set up what's coming with, with issue three, uh, Deadpool 3. Don't ask me about that. Okay, I'm not gonna ask you about Deadpool okay. 3. I'm going to look straight into the camera. Hi, everyone at Disney. Uh, this is Rob. I'm not talking about Deadpool 3. And You've seen it here. Nor did I try to get anything out They of tried to bait Deadpool. me. No, 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 no. They flew all the way here to bait me, and I didn't trip <laughs> on any of those wires. Well, what's crazy to think about in hindsight is that if it wasn't for like some leaked test footage, you know, we yes. might not have got that second shot at Deadpool. Right. Do you have any theories on who leaked that footage? I do, and I'm it not going to say. Was it you? I, I, it yeah. was you. Okay, it? it couldn't be me. It couldn't be. Me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I, I, people don't know this. If you go back in time and Google, uh, Wolverine Origins leaked a month before it was released. Yeah. The entire movie. And I remember the person at Fox says, we will find this person. And then a year later, they knocked on a lady's door. It may have been LA or New York. It was one of the major cities. They found out exactly. And they said, oh, Rob, we will find that signal. We will track it, the FBI, we will, because I mean, that's a huge intellectual property that the entirety of Wolverine Origins was online. Five weeks, they, they, they estimate they lost hundreds of millions of dollars. Why am I telling you this? Fox knows who leaks that foot. Fox, they know who leaked that foot. They're not, they're not, they don't not know, okay? But, but uh, I'm not gonna be the one. Like I, like I was even kind of given like a heads up like I, a heads up and I'm like, oh, I think this footage is coming and then boom and come on. Do you remember when that leaked? It was the Sunday night after San Diego was over. 
-hmm. It was the, so so everything had been announced at San Diego, and I think whoever leaked it said, "I think I can top all of those <laughs> announcements, right?" And and that button hit boom because that was crazy. But it did the job. It showed Fox that they were sitting on something that people really wanted. Hey, you asked me about colors. Yeah, the look yellow at that. Really look at that. Look at that, that yellow on. I just told you this. Like, look at this. Yeah. Look at how that pops. So this is. It's just fun mixing up the, the different colors. Now, has anybody ever told you the striking similarity you have with Brad Pitt? I'll explain. Uh, you no. guys, listen, listen, you both have uh, been in Levi commercials. <laughs> you both have made cameos in Deadpool and you both have fantastic hair. Okay, well, I really appreciate that. I get the, I, I get the Mark Wahlberg and yep. the Matt Damon for the last two decades, all the time. So thank you, <laughs> my, my, my family will fall off the couch laughing that you just said that. So I'm, I'm thankful for, for you saying that. Now, speaking of Brad Pitt, before yes, yes, he yes. was Vanisher, there's that yes. rumor that he was going to play Cable. Do you know if that's true? I know for a 100% fact that that was true. That is an app. Uh, I saw uh, I saw Cable, you know, they did previs. Yeah. And David Leach had a very special relationship by being uh, doing stunt stuff with him. What people don't know is that was like early, 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 early on. That was like he was one of the first guys. So when they knew they weren't going in that direction, they went down uh, several others, and I don't think I don't think Josh would would, would mind me telling this because the Fox people have told me, and Josh has told me, and their their their, their um, versions line up, and I think Fox was still uncertain about some of the people on the table, and they they said they they called Josh's agent and they called Josh and they said, would you read this? And he said, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do this movie. Like I, I I had no interest. But his wife, and he has given all the credit, Catherine Brolin. So what are you thinking? Let's read it at least. And she read it and she said, Josh, you have to be in this. And she gave it to Josh and he said he read it and he's like, it's pretty good. And he called Fox and said, okay, I'll do it. And, and in that window of time, had he not agreed, we're looking at another cable. And, and so to this day, I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Catherine Rowland. Thank you, everybody that worked to get Josh. I'm gonna tell you, man, I love Deadpool too. I freaking love that movie. It, when, when you create these characters and then you see them come to life and the, the first time they battle in the prison and, uh, and, 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 and the way that Josh enters, the way that Cable enters very much mimics when he enters in New Mutants 87. He, he enters into a base, blows through a wall, kind of enters. It, it was mimicking kind of his arrival. It, it, it's incredible the, the experience I've had watching these characters come to life. That actually makes me think of something I've wanted to ask you for a long time. Yes. And you've probably answered this, but I've never heard you say, but if you had to pick between Deadpool 1 or 2, which one? Oh, would you don't go make with? me do that. If you um, had to pick. Okay, okay, if I had to pick, I'm gonna, okay, Deadpool 1 is a classic. It's brilliant. Uh, but come on, Deadpool 2 has Cable, Domino, and even for 10 seconds, Shatterstar. And after Deadpool 3 comes out, we can talk, okay? <laughs> and, I, and I can tell you, even more fun no, stuff. I think I'm with you because Deadpool 2, like, yeah, Deadpool, Domino, like Deadpool 1 is a great setup movie, but then you've got Deadpool, Domino, Cable, a, a comic accurate juggernaut. <sighs> juggernaut. It's, yes. Uh, you, you just gotta understand, when you will this stuff into being, yeah. you know, and, and trust me, th this New Mutants book, uh, on my podcast, Rob's Observations, I was reading 1988 market reports on a recent episode, and it's from Overstreet Price Guide, 50 retailers wrote in, they used to do this all the time, they would write in and tell you how the market is doing, what's working, what's not. A couple of retailers like, New Mutants book's in trouble. I mean, it's not, I didn't write this. It, this is from retailers in North Carolina, in Florida, in Texas, you know, in Wyoming, I mean, it, California, they were all writing in their market reports. It's great to kind of get it all blended together, but people are like, the X-Men book that's in trouble is the New Mutants. And, and I'm like, I would be there nine months later. I would be on that book and it was like operation like, two paddles bringing this back. Like, <laughs> but I had to do it by throwing a bunch of characters out mm -hmm. and then putting my stuff in, putting my characters in. And it really helped really launch my career. So, I mean, these characters are always gonna be so near and dear to me and, and that period. Mm -hmm. And we've only, I, I gotta be honest, I, I think we've only scratched the surface with, with what's coming, you know. Uh, Don't tease me like that, Rob. I. I, I I'm teasing you. Can we talk about the Deadpool game and how it's been 10 years since it came yes, out? Isn't that yes, crazy? 2014, that game blew up. It, it is like, a, there, there's, there's certain, it, it got overshadowed by the movies, right? Yeah. But the movie was, the, the video I game. I love the game. The game's great. Did you play it? Uh, I, I had my son play it. Uh, he was 13 at the time. I got in tremendous trouble. <laughs> I'm not sure you can make that game today. 
There's no, the, you the can transition from three to four is Deadpool going towards a woman in a bikini and his hands are out and it looks like he's about to interact with her in a way that would probably be inappropriate. And my wife walked in, she says, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm having Luke play the Deadpool game so I can enjoy it. And she's like, turn that off. You remember video games exploded during that time in the 2000s. Yep. PlayStation, Xbox, all the different consoles and Deadpool was like in a Marvel game every year. Mm -hmm. And it built his awareness beyond the comic books, yep. which I think laid the foundation for the movies to be so successful. Well, actually, I played uh, the Lego Marvel game with my kid at the time. Okay. And the Deadpool chapters were our favorite part of the game. There I really love that. Uh, do you think Deadpool's gonna get a crack at his own game anytime soon? How are we not getting another Deadpool Marvel game? Let me just say that. How are we not getting another Deadpool? So here's the deal. I know that there's a ton of merchandise coming because it always comes mm -hmm. when the movies are, no matter what the delay is, you know? But you're gonna, for, for, uh, for about seven years prior to the recent Spider-Man explosion, Deadpool was the number one produced Marvel, uh, Marvel character at, at Funko. I put in for the official count and there were more Deadpools in like 2019 than there were Spider-Mans. That's before the Spider-Man 3 and the Spider-Verse and now everything's Spider-Man, right? But I think Deadpool is gonna have a super strong showing and I wouldn't be surprised if on the other end of that we get another video game. Wouldn't be surprised, don't know, wouldn't be surprised. I'm really hoping that he shows up in the new Wolverine game that's coming out. But I mean, I'm not asking. Also, no idea about Deadpool and Wolverine. Game. I wasn't, I wasn't is asking. Is this good? I just look right at the camera. Hello, <laughs> hello. I do want to ask about how you think Deadpool 3 is going to affect the comics market coming up. Like, yeah. Do you, do you think that there are certain books that are going to get, you know, even more expensive? Uh, you, know I think, you know what I think's funny? Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and if you could tell me what books to buy now, because um, I'll go ahead and try to do that on my budget before this comes out. Look, uh, I'm, so, so here's the deal. I'm going to tell you what I tell people on my live stream, what I tell people on my podcast. Buy the keys. Your yep. first appearances are what you want all the time. If you're, look, in this business, in this business, uh, look, I'm, I'm living this. I should have bought a nicer version of Hulk 181. Yep. First appearance of Wolverine, my favorite character. I have a couple of them. They're not as high grades as I would like them to be in. I passed it up. And here's the thing that hit me like a ton of bricks. On Facebook, some guy I don't know, but it was on the, one of those bold like announcements where you put the white letters on the blue background, yep. the purple, and it said, hey everybody, you, you're aware that eventually we're going to see Wolverine, likely Hugh Jackman, on camera fight Hulk, and everyone and their mother is gonna want a copy of this book. So what are you waiting for? And I was like, I felt like that was like Moses on Mount Sinai, yeah. God giving me the tablets. I'm like, I need to go for broke and get Hulk 181 right now because it, it there eventually that is, we just have to believe that is gonna happen. Yep. Now with, you know, I, I, it, just, it just feels like it is inevitable. The keys are always gonna be expensive. Mm -hmm. The faster you buy into them, the faster you can put it behind you and, 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 and get on to the next. But obviously, uh, New Mutants 98 is only gonna continue to appreciate. You know, New Mutants 98 and Amazing Spider-Man 300 have been the two top books of the 90s. Yep. They battle it out every month. Yep. Yeah. There's this ongoing joke about the way you draw feet. Okay. I wanna know, what do you think is worse? Being bad at drawing feet or being really good at drawing feet, because that's creepy, right? Well, no, I'm actually really good at drawing feet, and we should actually do an entire show on <laughs> on how many feet I've drawn. Um, like I've sh like, do you like, want like, me to? I'll no, lay. No, I'll no, lay no, on a couch no, okay. with I, my I, shoes I, off. I love. And this is Titanic great because style. see, when when you comment on something online, people just put a terse reaction in. But like, I don't understand. I don't understand the uh, obsession with showing people's feet. No, it's silly. because because I guarantee you. Uh, myself or any of the people, and the guy that hides feet the most in comics, if you can show me Hellboy's feet, uh, m most Mike Mignola compositions, he is hiding behind a rock, he is hiding behind clouds. It's what in, it's what inspired me and, and Silvestri and Jim Lee to kind of do the same, but he, Mike Mignola, gun to his head, would tell you he got it from Frazetta. If you're gonna go for a closer shot, guess what's getting eliminated? You're, you're eliminating the lower part of the legs because you want most of us want to do a tighter shot. And that is why things are absent, the showing of feet most of the time. But yeah, I think, uh, I would love to talk about this more, but I think it's, it's, it's kind of just an easy thing to address, but people are hung up on it. And I think it's funny, but it, it, it doesn't dent me. I just think, I think some of the jokes are like, I played out. Yeah. But truth be told, Ryan called me, before Deadpool 2, said, Rob, I'm doing this voiceover. I want to make sure that you're okay with it. And I said, I'm pretty sure you're putting it in whether I'm okay with it or not, <laughs> okay? But uh, but I, I'm gonna tell you that I, I love it. Yeah. I, I think it's great. 
and it and and it's it's a it's ridiculously funny every time I watch it in Deadpool 2. Now, what do you consider to be your five biggest creations outside of Deadpool? So, without a doubt, and the fans will tell you this, is Youngblood. Youngblood launched Image Comics. It is the first Image Comic by a, by a mile, by three months. Mm -hmm. Everyone else was waiting, because uh, young Robert Liefeld just was fearless. Youthful kind of uh, freedom that I had. Mm -hmm. And I just knew, and I said, I'm going. I'm doing my own thing. This is the time. People like my art. People like my characters. Uh, they, they didn't like the characters previously in New Mutants, but I, having been the guy who brought them the characters, I have a unique opportunity to continue that mix on my own. So Youngblood, I, 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 I told everybody, I'm doing this, I'm launching Image Comics, and I'm gonna tell you, the sales came in on Youngblood number one. Yep. The pre-orders were over 650,000. And everybody, suddenly, everybody was all too, you know, we've been thinking about that Image Comics thing. Let's do that, let's do that, let's do that, because it's gonna be safe. Everyone was, yep. you know, and, uh, and now it kind of won't matter if, if one company is mad at you. Uh, you're going to be doing so good on your own. And, and so Youngblood, uh, tremendously popular with the fans. And then from there, I would say, honestly, uh, Evangeline and Profit. Evangeline, it became our top selling book. Most people aren't aware of this, but it was, there was this uh, entire wave of female super heroines kind of became uh, the most popular figures in comics. And Evangeline went on to become our best-selling book for like three years. I mean, nothing could touch her. She just launched into the next stratosphere. And so Evangeline is super popular. Profit spun out of Youngblood number two. Yep. Everything that came out of the Youngblood series went on to great success. And, and so it, it was kind of the, I've always told you, uh, the Youngblood book was like my Fantastic Four, where you get like, in the Fantastic Four, you get Black Panther, you get Silver Surfer, you get uh, the Inhumans. They all came out, out of this. So that, that's why I think, I think Youngblood, Evangeline Prophet, that, 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 that's, that's, Youngblood covers a lot, so that, that more yeah. than covers. Oh yeah, I, well we can count Youngblood as one if you want to throw out two more. <laughs> sure, uh, I, I think I'm tapped out. <laughs> I think, I think, I think that, that covers so many, but I mean, blue, I would say Brigade and Bloodstrike. And, and here's the deal. Brigade actually outsold Youngblood yep. be, because it came after Youngblood and the hype was so big. Now they were anticipating, oh man, so they ordered even more. Uh, I've been signing a lot of Brigades today. Are there any like movie or TV updates on any of your other non-Deadpool creations? Also can't talk about that. I would love to tell you about three new projects. I would love to tell you about three new extreme projects. Uh, and I can't. Prior to the strike, uh, half of my day was on the phone talking with producers, directors, and uh, talent that will blow your mind who are wanting to bring these characters to life. Yep. And uh, I hope to bring more as soon as I can. Now, obviously, there are boxes and boxes. Yes. And boxes. I signed all those. Yeah. Everybody collects Rob Liefeld. What is Rob Liefeld collecting? What is the... What wow, is great question. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, and I'm, I'm not unlike everybody else in the business, I am, I am buying more manga than I am American comics right now. When I go to Barnes & Noble, I am grabbing all new uh, Kaiju number eight. I am, uh, uh, what's the one I just called? The Sudako Boys. I'm, I'm butchering the name, but I'm, I'm buying a lot of manga. Um, I, think com I, think, I think comic books, DC and Marvel comic books, have to get back to having more fun. Uh, what I'm looking forward to that's coming up, you're catching me at a weird moment, it's blank. Oh, oh, I'll tell you right now. The fact that Skybound has the G.I. Joe Transformers license. Mm -hmm. uh, the new Transformers looks incredible to me. Look, I, I follow talent also, and so, you know, anything that Eric Larson draws, anything that Mark Silvestri draws, I drew, I, I grabbed all of Mark's Batman book that came out last year. I think it's like the, one of the best illustrated, exciting, you know, exactly, it, it, it checks all the boxes that I told you, exactly, the the, the big, fun, uh, incredibly illustrated. Uh, from Marvel, I bought the new Hulk launch, and their Spider-Man book, the flagship Spider-Man book, is uh, is probably the best consistent Marvel book. The the one that Zeb Wells is doing is, uh, that that's on my must-buy list. So that that is a, so I gave you absolutely, I think it also is Marvel's best-selling book right now, because it also, is big and bold. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for to having me. me, man. This was awesome. Thanks I, for coming I to CGC. Comicbook.com at CGC with, as the Italians call me, LaFelt. <laughs>